Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome to, um, that's the applause of all of our uh, loving fans, both of them. Um, so welcome to another week. We've renamed it since last time, uh, you may have noticed. So instead of Film Photography Club, we had a few options. Unfortunately, the, the, the two final options, it was a 49-51 um, final score on the voting, which just gave us Brexit flashback. So we decided to cancel <laughs> off and rename it. Um, ourselves, one second, I've got a bit of there. Um, so yeah, analog television. And we are thrilled, not only myself and Graham here, but we have Charlotte from Lomography, in fact, head of marketing for Lomography. Charlotte, Yay! welcome. Hey, so hello everyone. Joining from Vienna. Yes, thanks for having me. <laughs> Wonderful. So we've had lots of your questions already come in on Instagram that we'll put to Charlotte. Uh, we'll also be talking about Lomography's uh, latest announcements. Um, uh, Graham has his velvet jacket ready for another mm -hmm. I think you know. Um, and we'll also be doing a giveaway, Selamography Films, once again for people who comment in the, uh, as we go through. So please don't be shy. Feel free to ask other questions, help each other out. Um, Emil, also from Lomography, I've seen pop up in the comments. Um, so if you want to ask him any specific technical questions. Yeah, ask him. Ask him. <laughs> no, say, ask Emil all technical questions. He particularly likes developing times to the second. Um, Love so it. He'll be able to help as well with any other thoughts that go on. Okay, preamble done. Charlotte, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I think we'll start with an easy one. So for people who haven't heard of Lomography or have heard of them, seen them as a brand, don't know a huge amount, um, a, a huge amount about them, let's start there. Who or what is Lomography? Yes. Um, so Lomography, I mean, it all started uh, with the co-founders who were, um, st as students, they were having a trip in Prague and they found this crazy little camera, the Lomo LCA, um, very randomly. And they took pictures. They were not sure what they were doing and why they were coming back to Vienna. When they developed the photos, they realized that the photos looked really awesome and it had a lot of, it has a very specific look and they loved it so much that they started this kind of collective about um, all this, um, about this camera and this, this sort of photos. Um, and from there, um, they founded the Lomographic International Society in 1992. Um, it had so much success that it turned into a business. Um, so that's why we're here now trying to, <laughs> yes, uh, that's why we're here now trying to um, um, just keep releasing new items that foster the community. Um, so now we have films, we have cameras, uh, we have art lenses, we have a very wide range of um, creative products for analog photography mm -hmm. and also a big part of Lomography is that we have this huge community uh, with us of Lomographers. We have over 1 million members of uh, Lomographers on the website so everyone is just sharing photos on the website, um, sharing tips, um, sharing, uh, doing also like film swaps and mm -hmm. The, the really like the inspiration for Lomography is just this huge community. No. Um, and I think that's, um, I think that that stands out. I mean, well, I think there's two things that stand out. One is definitely that community side and so much of what you seem to do is built around that. Like, yeah, um, that Lomography, it was before even Facebook photo sharing was that bit. You guys had the Lomography and the Lomo homes. Um, exactly. And then the second thing I think that stands out is the fact that during the, the noughties and the tens when the film industry seemed to be collapsing, you were the guys who <laughs> seemed to every year come up with a new camera or a new film. Yeah. You were like, what? Film's dying? I did not get that memo. Look, here's the Diana. Oh, look, here's 110. Oh, look. Um, so I think that's, the, from my point of view, and again, we were joking just before we came on, like Graham's got an LCA somewhere behind him somewhere. Mm. It's in a box. Exactly. I'm pretty sure <laughs> there's one in this room. This isn't even my main camera. <laughs> Um, so I think a lot of people know that Lomo look and when you say like the, the visual aesthetic. 
that comes along that. Okay, fantastic. So there's a couple of um, specific things that people were, were asking about. Um, let's start with the obvious one. Now, we love the analog escapism. We try not to talk about the C word. What's the C word, Graham? Uh, now, I felt bad because last week, I think I got it wrong. I apologise for the offence course. It's cunnilingus, right? No, right. Move on. Um, so <laughs> okay, uh, I'll get it next week. Good. I'll definitely get it next we... week. <laughs> <laughs> but in this in this situation, I think it's worth saying. So, how is Lamography coping with the current global situation? How are you feeling? Um, people phone me quite panicky sometimes at the moment, just worrying about film production. Um, what's the? What, how do you see the world? Um. So. I mean, obviously, it's like any other business. It was, let's say, a bit worrisome at first. We are not a pasta brand. We might not be like an essential. Oh, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but in the end, I think we are very lucky that we have this huge community um, and that, yeah, we have this strong presence online. Um, we're also not very worried about film photography in general. I mean, it has been there for a long time. It survived the digital, um, the arrival of digital photography. It survived in many things. I think, I, I think we will survive this crisis very easily. Well, I mean, again, like I've already referenced it. You guys were the ones who came through the collapse of the film industry looking like uh, it was the best time in the world to be making film. Um, so I do feel confident, and that's great, and that, that seems to... Um... And, I mean, we also see still a lot of people who, are, who keep on buying films. They also stay creative at home. They shoot indoors. They take time to scan all the films <laughs> that they didn't have time to scan before. Um, they start do-it-yourself projects or also like take pictures from their windows like documenting what they see outside or documenting empty places um i think it's just a different type of creativity uh right now but yeah we're we're certainly not worried here that is that is wonderful to hear um fantastic okay i'm just getting a couple of comments by the way sorry about um volume balance so i've just made a quick tweak People in the comments could let me know if that makes a bit more sense. Okay then, so let's talk. So we've, we've referenced it a couple of times. So new films. So again, in a world where <laughs> a lot of people were shutting down and um, closing down shop, you came out with one film a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah. And then you were going to come on last week and said, actually, you know what? Let's go, let's, let's push it back a week because we're going to bring another film. So we have two films. <laughs> Um, Phantom and Berlin. Which one do you want to start talking about with? Oh, maybe we can start with the first one, the, the Phantom. Phantom, perfect. Okay, yeah. there we go. So I've put up a couple of images there. Um, so this is an ISO 8. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, so, so first of all, just to talk a bit about the timing of the launch. I mean, of course, we had prepared uh, everything beforehand, we had no idea what was going to happen. Uh, so we thought about it a lot and we decided to go ahead anyway with the release of the films. Um, we feel like it's, for us, it's good news. Mm. We feel like that might be needed right now to also see some positive news from time to time. Um, and it's, also important for us to uh, keep creating um, products, keep creating content for our community. So now it's it, it seemed it seemed even more important actually for us to make this release. So that's why we decided to go ahead anyway. Um, so yeah, about the the Phantom Kino um, <laughs> film. Uh, yeah, so for sure we absolutely love to release unique films. We might not do things that, that people are expecting us to do. Low ISO might not be something that everyone was expecting, but here we are. And I think so far the response was, was that everyone has been really, really impressed by the high contrast of this film. 
I've actually I think this interrupting. there's a couple of comments coming in and, and people are already saying that yeah so someone's saying this looks amazing someone's saying moody moody <laughs> um, yeah I think Rachel's comment is saying the, 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 the portrait uh, the photograph that's up there is, is really good um, someone else Joshua Coles just said that uh, he's gonna love making big prints from this oh yes <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the Phantom Kino has this really, really high contrast, um, deep blacks, deep whites. So, um, of course, with a low ISO film, you want to make sure that you have a camera uh, with manual settings where you can set your shutter speed, your aperture right. Um, if you have lens, you also need a fast lens. Um, and yes, you need to shoot in sunny situations. Um, in super bright situations, it, it will be fine to uh, shoot also just and help. Mm. Um, we have a couple of testers who shot like this and it came out fine. Um, of course, if you shoot indoors or if it's cloudy, you want to get a tripod for sure. Yeah, I've actually put up as well the um, the one of the bridge, so the sample shot of the bridge that's sort of like backlit silhouette. Yeah. Like the lines and the contrast is amazing. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, we, we feel like these photos, they look very dramatic and um, reminded us a bit of the theater <laughs> mood. Yes. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Graham, have you ever shot something uh, as low as ISO 8? Not film, no, only paper. Um, so yeah, my I've been tempted, but, but the problem is I'm never organised enough to have uh, a tripod or something like that around. But I really like because the the big appeal of these things is to be able to go out and play around with long shutter speeds um, when the sunlight is up, and it, it opens up so many creative opportunities that you just don't get with ordinary speed films um, the fact that you can go out on a sunny day when there's lots of people around and still have a slow shutter speed so you can get movement and motion blur yeah. and stuff like that yeah. in there and there's lots of fun stuff you could do with it yeah i think it's gonna be great yeah and yes some people have been asking about development in the questions and emil is fortunately there to answer every technical question <laughs> yeah. yes so if you have also any specific questions we have a guide uh, that you can see um, both on our online magazine and on the product page. We also have um, it. We link to a PDF document that uh, explains uh, how to shoot it, how to develop it. No, perfect. So um, yeah, so because at the moment you've done you've done Kickstarters before. This isn't a Kickstarter, is it? This is a a pre-release. People can buy pre-release for a yes, exactly. Yes, we right now we have twenty percent off with the pre-order. So we already sold out actually of the first batch for the Phantom Kino. Yes, it went really fast. Uh, yes. <laughs> Ironic so... for a very slow film. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so we opened the second batch of uh, films right now, but meaning that, I mean, it's first, um, first come first serve. So of course you will get your film later if you uh, pre-order later mm. um and you might want to secure your roles really fast because again <laughs> i mean we have limited quantities so if you want to get your hands on this film very soon yes there we go and, to be and all that goes against all of my natural instincts as a retailer uh, you go to Lomography's shop <laughs> to buy. <laughs> um, so, what? When do you think people will get it if they buy the pre-sale? So the first batch was um, planned for June. Mm -hmm. We're working really hard to try to <laughs> make it even earlier. So I think we will have some good news to share. Oh, okay. Um, yes. Uh, and the second batch for now we estimated September. Mm -hmm. And but it's the same. We we are trying to speed up the production. No, and um, and then from a <laughs> selfish point of view, when will it be available <laughs> for retailers, or is that not known yet? I don't want to put you on the spot. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course, first we will want to uh, deliver all the the customers. Mm -hmm. So, I think when we open the third batch, probably. 
Got it. When it's more open. I hope soon. I hope Amy is with it, you know, for sure. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. Um, I'll, I'll can I, open the mail. Great. Can I ask a question? So, uh, as you said, you've it's always you've done a lot with Kickstarter up until this point. Is this the start of a new direction? Are we going to see more of the Lomography stuff coming kind of direct from you guys rather than going through Kickstarter going forwards? I think we've always had a mix between Kickstarter and pre-launching on our online shop or launching real time. It depends on on the products. It it really depends um, on. Yeah, I, I think it re it really depends on on the products. And for instance, we um, had the new version of the Loma Prom Purple recently, which we did just pre-launch on on our online shop. We had the older Berlin Kino, Potsdam Kino. They were also directly on our online shop, and we didn't do um, a Kickstarter release. Mm. No, that makes that makes total sense. By the way, there's a couple of people also asking about setting it. So we're saying a manual camera. Um, it's very unlikely any camera would have an ISO eight setting on it. <laughs> Although you're lucky if you do have one. Um, so the trick will be you'll have to tell the camera that it's faster, and then you'll have to adapt by a few stops, likely, and um, which is true for a few of the other ones as well. Um, okay, perfect. So that's um, that's Phantom. So let's move on to Babylon which was announced a couple of days ago, I think. So again, I've put up a pack shot on one of the portraits. So this is, um, I mean, this is a super fast speed ISO 13. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but already, immediately you can see from the sample image that it has a, a different look. Yes. So the Babylon re-released on Tuesday, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's again uh, pre-order. Again, if you get it now, you get twenty percent off. <laughs> <laughs> and so yes, it's it's very different. Uh, you can see it's more balanced in the in the grays. Uh, you have a high dynamic range, and if you're not sure about uh, low ISO film, maybe this is the film you want to start with first before the phantom because it might be more forgiving for you at first um you will get a very different look for sure than than the phantom i think it looks the grain looks incredible with this film uh you can see all the little details on the skin mm -hmm. all this like little crazy hair yeah. you can really a lot of details it's it's very sharp if, if you have good camera and a good lens it's i think it looks really amazing no that's perfect so yeah we've got the photo up with the portrait of the the lady with the freckles and it really stands out you can see in the background there's a softer gray than the really dark black we've had a question come in from Gemma rochester um who comes up with the names is that you charlotte or does your team come up or what's the what's the process <laughs> it's not me personally <laughs> <laughs> you sit there and you have a dream you wake up babylon <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it could have been this for the Phantom. I mean, actually, since it's that's true. Yeah. Taken from from French, but no, it was was not me personally. <laughs> um, no, basically, we we just um, make a, we brainstorm some names and then we have a vote uh, within the the company to decide what works best and also get opinions from everyone. Gotcha. And actually, the final sample one I'm going to put up is a um, one that came in your press pack, a lovely one of some wheat. And then when I was um, getting it ready for tonight, I noticed in the file names it was taken by a Hamish Gill, Graham. I don't know whether yes. you've heard of that chap before. No, no. Oh, is is he the um, Scottish photographer with the website? <laughs> exactly. Gotcha. Scottish Hamish. Yeah. There we are. <laughs> Gill uh, featured in the Mography press pack. That's wonderful. So again, have you seen... Have you, it, it was launched on Tuesday. Have you already seen whether people love this as much as the Phantom? Is it more? Is it the same? What's the first impressions? Um, I think people are excited also for for this film. Um, I think it's it's just a different style of photography. People were were really impressed, I think, by the contrast of the Phantom Kino while the Babylon looks more versatile. So 
in the end it 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 might it might be a, a go-to film in the future mm -hmm. rather than then the phantom might be very specific and not the type of film that you want to use every day no, no. as a low iso film also that makes perfect sense so graham putting you on the spot now which one just based on the sample photos are you more excited about mm -hmm. Uh, I think Babylon for me definitely for the for the exact reason that you just said because whilst the um, the other one it, it is it's almost like a special effect film in the sense that like for a specific purpose it's going to be great when you mm -hmm. but to have um, a low ISO film that is actually flexible and you can experiment in terms of what you want to do with it rather than just being like it only do it'll only work well with this kind of thing i think that's great and i think it's going to be a really fun addition to um just the general palette of films out there so yeah that's definitely gonna be the one that i'm looking forward to see, I'm immediately I, I i hear you i just i'm excited about Fanto. i'm just loving that i was saying about the um i've got a soft spot at the moment for really contrasty black and whites um so that one really appeals i mean i'm, I'm just waiting already for someone in the comments to start talking about which one they're going to shoot in a pinhole or do astrophotography with, because that seems to be the instinct for whatever <laughs> these long exposure. What if I use an ND filter? Um, oh, and actually, Rachel, uh, Rachel chipped in saying Graham would go with Babylon before you said it. So <laughs> see, you, he knows. You guys, he knows. And actually, Hilary Clark's come in saying I would love to try both of these. I love Metropolis, which. It's almost as though we planned it. We're going to um, talk a little bit about Metropolis because that was the uh, the last film that sort of you launched in a big way, came out over Christmas, first colour film on the market for over five years. Um, mm -hmm. So before we talk about it, I'm just going to bring up <laughs> the the video. Um, now, Charlotte's <laughs> laughing because she, she listened to this probably a thousand million times over the Kickstarter. So she is very much over the music. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for the rest of us we will enjoy it so it's just a couple of minutes just recapping the metropolis film and then we'll get into some questions on it so i'm really excited about the loma chrome metropolis film uh, i just looked at some of the images they look really beautiful and i can't wait to shoot with it I mean, I'll definitely be shooting uh, the new Lomo Metropolis film. It's, it's gorgeous. I think in particular it works well for portraiture. The poppy contrast is stunning for, for certain clothing, you know, against certain backgrounds. Facial features, you know, eyes and lips just render wonderfully on this film. What I like too is the saturation level, which is very agreeable to the eye and with a lot of contrast. We like it all the time. So I shot the Lomochrome Metropolis Metropolis like I would shoot any other película. Sauf que tout simplement le rendu était euh, différent de tout ce que j'ai vu avant. The new Lomacoma Metropolis film, it, it looks really cool. It's very desaturated, like high contrast, very like film noir. We're finally working on a completely new emulsion again. The hype around film photography is big right now. We see a big increase in people shooting more films, so it's very exciting for a very big community that we're bringing out completely new film. So the Lomachrome Metropolis film I got to look at today, I thought it looked very grungy, kind of gritty. So There's a little bit more, we, uh, oh, we've lost Graham. Hello, Graham. <laughs> I was looking for my LCA. <laughs> Any luck? <laughs> I've got as far as digging out the box, so I'm getting there. There we go, perfect. So there we go. So we saw a little bit of the Metropolis and we all got to enjoy the music one more time. Um, so there's a couple of people already commenting as soon as this came up saying uh, either they're really excited about um, getting there. Uh, so Bonnie Valquist said um, she can't wait until labs open so she can see her quarantine Metropolis shots. Um, I don't know whether that's stuck in a lab or whether she's waiting for, for it to come through. Um, people have really enjoyed shooting it. Um, so what's the response been then? So it came in Christmas, so we've had a few months of it out in the wild. How have, yes. how has your Lomography community uh, enjoyed it? I think they really loved it. I mean, we see it. It's one of our bestsellers right now. Um, people are really, really fond of it. 
Um, I think people were very surprised at first. Um, some people were saying this is very unique and uh, for sure we we didn't have in mind to produce again another neutral film. This is not something that we want to do. We don't want to reproduce another Kodak Portra or whatever. This is not something we want to do now. We want to really have fun mm. and give really creative um, products to our community. So I think, yeah, people have really enjoyed it, uh, shooting with it so far. And they also love the fact that we released it also in one ten format, yeah, <laughs> in medium format, and and not only thirty five millimeter. Because like, the first role I shot was um was in one ten uh, for my sins, um, mm. <laughs> and actually I've this week because of the last few weeks, um this week I sent that one off and then a thirty five mil um over to the lab over to silver pan so i am really excited hopefully in the next week i'll see the first results um so again yeah so you chose well i mean we can go back into it in more detail but 110 format is something that you guys again made a whole stand about saying we will bring that back um, yes and, and why? it wasn't just in a couple of films you're now bringing <laughs> films sorry graham what was that oh uh, why 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 <laughs> so, there are, <laughs> why? There are members of the community charlotte graham <laughs> don't necessarily see the benefit of a small uh, film. I am not of that ilk. No character behind. I don't, I don't mind here. It, and has there been a good response from people who enjoy the one ten format? Do they like the fact they've got new films and new toys to play with? Yeah, exactly. And they were also very excited when we released the Lomo Chrome Purple also yeah. on one ten format. Yes. And you've also put Metropolis just now into your simple use cameras as well, which are the exactly loadable. Yes. Yes, exactly. And, and and this one then, you've done before films that have sort of come in and come out or you've done in batches, whereas this one is one that you see being a, a central part of your business for the next few years. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah, we think so, yes. Brilliant. Now, that's fantastic. I mean, again, I am super excited to see, uh, see mine come back. And so people have been asking a couple of comments there about the... Um, so Metropolis came through and then you've done a few um, black and white ones as well. Mm-hmm. Can you give us any view of what you see as the next the next thing that you'd be looking to do? Would it be more black and white? Would it be more colour? I mean, colour must be a lot harder. It's gen- yes, it is. It is harder. Uh, but for for sure, we we are always up for a challenge. So, of course, we would love to work again on a colour negative film. Yes. Yeah. So up for a challenge. Um, Mike Rasso from FPP was on last week, and he has a real uh, <laughs> bee in his bonnet in a nice way about a 126 format. So when um, we were talking to Sport Live, you saw 126 format on our email. And, and, um, so what's Lomography specific 126 format, and when can we send some to Mike? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, right now I'm not aware of any plan <laughs> for this <laughs> format. Um, I mean, basically, we. I mean, we also sometimes come up with things based on what the community uh, feedbacks to us. So, if there's sometimes any products, anything that you you would really love to get, you always can shoot us an email, a DM, something, and we always pass the comments to our research and development team. We always like try to think of new exciting products. So, of course, we are welcoming any feedback that anyone has. <laughs> well, a very, very good answer to, to Mike's uh, demand. Um, because the way he was saying it, he was like, it's 35 mil width. You just put it in a plastic canister. How hard can this be? So, we said, good point. Good point. I mean, yeah. Mm. I mean, I would if I, if I could, but um, <laughs> sadly not. Okay, then. And then, then the final one, and then I'll stop grilling you and let, and let Graham uh, have a go. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the other thing, and and I was surprised, and, and you said as well when we were chatting, you were surprised as well, um, high-speed colour film. Now, I think I know where this is coming from because I think everyone loves Lomo 800 and stock mm. has been tough to get hold of um, mm-hmm. through retailers like myself, but also through your central site for a while. Um, also, with uh, Fujifilm just gradually 
chipping away and dropping those colours. We lost 1600. Venus 800 apparently is in the um, Byron Light as well. Um, the only <laughs> brands that people can turn to for colour film is, is Kodak, who are not doing a portrait 1600 anytime soon, and Lomography, who are renowned for bringing out films that are a bit more interesting and outside those normal sort of 100 to, to, to 800 things. So high-speed colour film. Um, first of all, I think, is there any comments on, on the stock that you can make, apart from the fact that I know it's always difficult? And then are there any ideas, again, about anything faster? Uh, yeah, so about the stock, um, so actually we have right now again in stock the color negative 400, which was also out of stock for a little while. Um, and for the 800, I think we still have in stock the medium format, so maybe you can <laughs> try shooting medium format. That's it fine. Will be I'll, amazing. I'll have a chat with Emil straight after this. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, um, yes, so. Uh, of course, now with the mm. basically the demand became really, really big for for these films. Uh, so we are trying everything we can to keep up with this demand. Um, of course, now with the I'm not allowed to pronounce the C word. Uh, <laughs> exactly. It, it, yes. it will slow down maybe a, a little our plans, but yeah, we're trying everything we can to get some stock back as soon as possible. So if you see it online, just buy it right away. Of course, <laughs> that's my advice. That's that's literally my motto. So um, <laughs> fine. I mean, I think again, with if with you see it, get it. <laughs> with the history of the last 10 or 15 years of other companies, when stocks start to become difficult, sometimes that's the beginning of the end of it. Whereas what I'm hearing from you is there's no there's no plans to get rid of Lomo 800. It's just a short term demand thing, supply. Yeah, they there were a lot of fake news actually about us uh, discontinuing this film, but no, no, we we want to keep producing it. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, good. Well, we want to keep shooting it. Graham, I think it's time for the velvet jacket. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna try and not not dunk it in the tanks of uh, fix it or developer that have been left open in the shed for. Perfect. I'm gonna fade into the background and remove myself. Um, Charlotte, okay. if you need. Uh, you know, everything to stop, then just give, say the <laughs> Graham, back to you. Okay, thank you very much, Paul. So, yeah, um, as I hope Paul warned you, Charlotte, we like to test every week how well our guests know uh, you know what they're what they're doing. So we will know how well you know Lomography. So we've got five questions here, only five. Um, and most of them are really easy. And most of them are pretty much related to Lomography. Uh, so let's start with an easy one, which honestly... I really hope you know the answer to this because I don't want to have to say it myself. What does LOMO stand for? It's based on the LOMO LTA camera. <laughs> the LOMO is actually an acronym. It stands for something. <laughs> please, oh please tell me you know it because I've got it written down here and it's going to go real bad if is I have to read this out. <laughs> it's really Russian. <laughs> It's like mad. <laughs> okay. Um, it is. Go on, Grant. With apologies. No, it stands for uh, Leningradskoy Optiko Mechanistskoy Opdiadineni. <laughs> Something like that. Hey, hang on, that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, question number two. The golden rules of lomography came out really early. That was one of the sort of first things when they came back and they started the collective. What is rule number four? Rule number four? Uh, I think it's don't think. Oh, you so no. close. So close. Wait, 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 wait. Should try the shot from the hip. That's it. Nailed it. Applause. Hang on. Yay. I, I was a little bit concerned with that because, you know, shot number four, rule number four is try and, try and shoot from the hip. Number five is get as close as possible. And number seven is act fast. I mean, that these make sense in sequence. Um, okay. Uh, question number three. So Metropolis, we talked about a lot. It's got that really great music, sound of a drum kit being thrown down the stairs. Um, it launched a great acclaim in 2019. Uh, what year did the movie with the same name come out? Oh. Uh, on. You what? must have had to look at this. Yes, I did. Oh, this this is like a student memories now. 
Uh, <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> was it uh, 19, 1926? Oh, I'm not, 1927. That was close. Oh, that is really <laughs> good. Very, very good. Definitely. And a triangle. <laughs> uh, triangles are. okay question number four you're nearly there um so the lca was obviously the first camera that launched lomography as it in terms of what do you know was their second camera to market i think it was the action sampler oh wow boom straight in there absolutely i've got oh, hang on a second. <laughs> i've got an off-brand action sampler i couldn't find them. but you're not allowed <laughs> to bring that. that onto a call with lomography <laughs> star case okay last question which short run film from a lomography was reported in the popular press as being aged like fine wine in oak casks the f2 <laughs> the f2 yes and does it age like fine wine in oak casks of course <laughs> I can confirm. <laughs> oh my gosh! So what was the schools on the doors there, Graham? I think that's four out of five. Oh my gosh! Wow! Very this. good. Wow! This. We have a new leader. We'll do bicycle horn celebration there. That's a kind of... Do I win something at the end? <laughs> um, you are top of the leaderboard. The admiration of us all. Exactly, and great. It's like, going to be like uh, Top Gear, where Graham's going to rank everyone over time. Um, yeah. That is an excellent result. I couldn't believe in 1926. So um, people were super impressed by the 1926. So somebody else got it right. Uh, ah, Sherry got it right. Peter James got it right. I would have got very low scores on this. These are tough. <laughs> yep, yeah. Emile's come in. Tough questions. Well done, Charlotte. Excellent. <laughs> there we go. Emile, if anybody wants, would you have got right? Uh, write in the comments. We'll put them up. Um, honestly needed. Graham, any? Can I, can, can... Yeah, can I just say, if anybody out there uh, either can or just wants to have a crack at sending us in an audio clip of how you say the name of, of what Lomo is, I would love to hear that <laughs> because it was no, definitely nothing like the words that I <laughs> mangled my way through. But it feels like we need someone uh, who, who might be able to help. Lena Bessanova might be able to help. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Get Lena on it. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for enjoying that, Charlotte. That was brilliantly done. <laughs> That was fun. <laughs> now I'm relieved now. This is all. Yeah, totally relates. Um, okay then. So uh, we've talked a bit about that. So um, is there anything else that people are going through? So the other, if we're going through um, uh, extra questions that people have asked for, um, other formats, Cinefilm uh, is something that we talked quite a lot with Mike and FPP um, last week. And obviously you have done some 16 mil, um, both in the... <laughs> and mm, is it the purple? The uh, we had the turquoise and the purple. Yeah. Um, so is that something that you are looking to expand? Is that something that you hear people asking for or something at the moment that's just uh... So actually we we thought that uh, we would expand with the Metropolis. Mm -hmm. So we offered it at first also in the in the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, we said if we have enough demand, we will also make this film in 16 millimeter. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get enough demand. So yeah, we we just need to make sure that we have enough demand before um, bringing back some more. Okay, I was about <laughs> to. <laughs> Can you go mute while you unpack your fridge, please? Actually, we found it. <laughs> I knew it was in there somewhere underneath a big pile of other, of not other, of, of plastic cameras. But yeah, my little LCA. There you go. The camera that launched literally one photography company. But that's enough. That, I mean, that's not that's more than most cameras manage, in fact. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, that's wonderful. And um, OK, then. So for, for you then, Charlotte. So you've been at Lomography for four years. Um, were you a film photographer before that? Or was it a job first and then it's turned into your passion or were you always interested in, in film photography? Uh, I was doing a little bit, but really just like going on trips, going on holidays. Sometimes I was having also a film camera with me. 
Mm-hmm. I remember when I was a kid, I had a very, very fancy film camera with um, Looney Tunes packaging. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somehow this is like my first memory of film photography. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it, it just then came all from the job, um, from working with people who are very passionate about it, also being in touch with the community every day. Of course, you get into it very fast. So the question that everyone um, will want to know, your favourite camera and your favourite film. Now, you can do a Lomography and non-Lomography one if you want. Uh-huh. You can do like the official, <laughs> well, in case anyone's listening from Lomography, and then you can do, you know. Yes. Uh, well, actually, for the camera, I'm very fond of the LCA 120, I have to say. Yes. I I just feel like whatever photo I take, which I think will be super boring, it adds a little something, it adds some character and in the end I really love all the photos I took with this camera. Um, I mean I also love the LC white because I love when it fits in my pocket. Yeah. This is something I really personally like. Uh, in terms of film. Um, well actually it's interesting because on the have you shot with them um, so you've obviously got the LCA great have you got you shot with the wide or the 120? No, I haven't. Only the only the uh, OG LCA. I do. I would really like a 120 because, as you said, um, it it the the lens on this camera it gives everything. It, it has a real defined look to it. I can certainly see why it became such a thing. Um, and I think on 120 that would be really good fun. Um, so one day. Um, but yeah, not yet. I know it's actually. I've had um. So Ben Mills, a hip shoot film, one of the guys in the UK, um, is currently in the process of selling off some of his cameras to presumably buy more cameras. Um, <laughs> and one of the ones that he was offering was an LCA 120. And I've had to stop myself from messaging him many times because I don't have the money for anything right now. Uh, but that I think probably would be the next on my list. So I've shot with the LCA for, for years and loved it. As you say, like the extraness that you get from photos and also how compact it is. I mean, someone I, yeah. I remember described it as the best street medium format camera because of the combat size and and I would totally from what I've seen of it totally agree um the wide's interesting I think um uh, one of my friends has has a wide and the the normal LCA is already quite wide (laughs) I was I was a little skeptical but actually when you look through it you realize okay no that is that is crazy okay then and then film yes so if I were to give like a lomography and Mm non-lomography option so Somehow, lomography, well, it, it might be surprising, but I love the color negative 100. Mm-hmm. I, before, I didn't like it so much, but then I actually shot with it with the LTA 120. <sighs> and I was just like, is this really the color negative 100? Oh my God, this was so good. I really could not believe it. You, so Because it was medium format rather than 35 mil, or was it just you, you suddenly clicked into the aesthetic and it just worked? I I think in in general I I like more the medium format I would say yes, um, and then for the non lomography option I'm also quite a fan of the Ektar. Yeah, yeah, it's a firm favorite. What what draws you to it? I just love the red tones specifically. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's fair enough. And <laughs> um, one thing that um has come out in the last few months has been um, you've been working on a few different environmental initiatives as well as the products and the plastic canisters. Um, I actually had a message from somebody who's doing some home developing panicking a couple of days ago um, because she couldn't get the, uh, she couldn't work out a way of doing it. This might again not be a fair question, this might be a technical question from me and in the comments, but is there a trick to unload it? Because I think everyone loves the idea of saying that we need to I mean, we're, we're basically shipping plastic and chemicals, so you're always starting from a certain point with the environment, but we shouldn't let that stop us from trying to do the right thing where we can. Canisters kind of is a great idea, but how do you get into them? How, sorry? How do you get into the canisters to unload them for home developing? Yes, um, so, well, actually, let me get a film. Hammer. <gasps> a demo. A no, I mean, I will, I, 
it's my own type of film now. And <laughs> oh no, they read a new film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. I don't, I don't have anything else. But okay, so I have a Lomochrome purple. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm not sure like how good you can actually see on the video, but if you see at yeah. the top and at the bottom, you have these tiny locks. Yeah. Uh, so what you want to do is that you first you need to remove the label and um, you would need like two very thin tools. Mm -hmm. So either like very thin uh, screwdrivers or scissors or yeah, anything that, is, that can be that can actually go under yeah. this little lock. And um, so you first you raise the first one here and you keep it in place the first tool and then you do the same thing on the other side mm -hmm. and as you do these normally you are able to raise the top it should be easy then to open and um while you open the the the, the top yeah the bottom should loosen up a bit and it should be easy to really crack it open Wow. Okay. That... If, if and if yeah, I'm not sure how good this was on video, no, no, but... but that was perfect. I think the I think the thing that you said that made immediate sense was remove the label first, <laughs> ah. <laughs> because of course, like that'll be holding it all together if that doesn't pop open. Yes, but if if uh, someone has any troubles, they can also just shoot us a DM or something, and we help. There is no problem. My friend, it was Sarah Smith who uh, who was pinging me. I think she ended up uh, basically <laughs> using a hammer inside the changing bag just to get. Oh, it. oh my hammer god! Hammer time. <laughs> the an approach. Um, yeah. But there we go. We've got people saying, "Yeah, really helpful. Thank you, Charlotte." Gemma's saying that. That's brilliant. Um, my mission is complete. Exactly. There we. <laughs> yes. There are some people who are. Yeah. Tweezers might work. I think so, Shirley. Um, so there we go. So it's a bit, maybe a little bit extra versus just a film retriever, but but that that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. So then let's. I've not asked about films for a couple of minutes, um, <laughs> being pinged relentlessly. Um, so F two and turquoise are the ones <laughs> that, even when the Mogfi aren't coming on our live stream, I get questions about pretty much every week. <laughs> I've looked on your yeah. and I can't find turquoise. Hey. Mm. So. Um, what is there any chance of coming back or is this one that we just like Kodachrome we have to say it was wonderful while it existed and, and now we move on yeah so for the f2 film it will not come back because yes it this was not possible it was aged in uh, <laughs> oak. You know, could you not put some of the color 100 in oak casts now <laughs> and then in seven years it. time They'll be ready. It's a thousand years, Graham. Sorry, it's a thousand years. Oh, sorry. Oh, well, worth okay. it. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, actually, we should do this again. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we had very limited quantities. We we sold out everything we had. Um, for the turquoise, we're also getting so many requests for this. And it's it's very interesting because Back then, when it was actually in stock, maybe people were like, this film is completely crazy. Why would you want to turn everything blue? It even turns people blue. This is insane. And now everyone is just, they really want it back. So, I mean, of course, it's on the table. And we would really love to have the complete lower chrome family again, the purple metropolis, the turquoise. So, yeah, we, we are really looking into this. I cannot promise anything, but for sure it's in discussion. No, 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 and that's wonderful. I, again, I, I think everyone who um, who does this, in the background of a lot of companies making different decisions and not always being transparent about it, <coughs> Fiji, um, <laughs> it's often people that are just looking for that clarity of, is this one that if we ask for or can hope for? And that's brilliant. I mean, I think you're dead right. I remember shooting Turquoise and... The shots came back and were very impactful, and I remember thinking they're brilliant, but not for every day. But the number of times now I'll be scrolling through old old looks and see it and be like, oh man, I wish I had that again. <laughs> I have this really um, strong one of like sheep, sheep that were purple. It's just it, yeah. That would be fantastic. I think that's a really exciting um, thing. Yeah, people are saying they're 
word or that'll say I have an amazing picture of some blue strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's fantastic. And okay, then that will be the last one I think that I'll ask about uh, about that side then. Graham, was there anything that was on your mind in particular? Yes, definitely. So um <laughs> obviously <laughs> Um, so we've had the films and that's been fantastic. And then before we had the sort of the push on the films, um, Lomography was focused for you know, a few years very much on the instant side. And you've got a fantastic range of instant cameras. Uh, but I think what we're all really want to know is, are we going to get more cameras full stop from Lomography? Now, last year you had the, I can't remember what it's called, but the uh, the camera that you could like pour gin into and shoot Hello, pictures Mark. through. Yeah, exactly. Um, are we going to see more cameras? Because that's the kind of that's the thing that's missing at the moment. What's coming on that front? Yes. Uh, yeah, we are really also working on cameras, of course. And and it's also interesting you mentioned the how we had uh, extended this whole range of instant cameras, and now we are focusing more on film because obviously this is also um, a trend that we are seeing now that. The instant photography was really big before. Everyone now has a, a instant camera of some sort, and we are now really seeing a shift from these people who maybe they started with instant, maybe they started also with the disposable, the simple use cameras, and now they are really getting interested in film photography. So this is also why we are not losing hope for film photography in the future because we see that all the younger generations are also getting very interested into film photography and they don't stop at instant photography. Mm. Uh, and yeah, of course, we, yes, we are working on camera. <laughs> so, so how long we before we can see something? So many, we have so many projects all the time we're working I know, I do, on. I do, feel, I do feel a bit bad because when you look at the questions they come in, it makes sense. Like, oh yeah, well, that's that. I guess we'll have that. By the way, there's some that I haven't asked, but, but Emil is getting absolutely pummeled on X-Pro. <laughs> um, Good. So, exactly. He's dealing with it fine. It's okay. Um, <laughs> but it is reflective of, we speak to a lot of companies and it's like the one thing that they're going to do in the next 10 years or actually they're not, but that's a choice and, and they're going to stay where it is. And you're right with Lamography, it does feel as though we've had this glut of uh, brilliant products and films. And again, not everyone likes everyone, but you, you're always providing the options. Like the person who likes the Lomo mod might not be the person who's buying the LCA 120 and vice versa. It, it is incredible, but it must also be overwhelming. So when you look at all these, you know, we've mentioned 20 ideas here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, how do you prioritize it? Because again, from as your your head of marketing, so you must sit there and say, look, we've got the brand and we've got the whole communication plan to run. We can't just throw 20 things out and just see what sticks. How do you decide where to start and what's most important? Uh, well, most of the time there will always be a discussion first about what is actually doable, what's the timeline for production for an item and I think most of the time this will actually solve the situation on its own. Yeah. Um, and then of course it's in, in terms of seeing what are the, the trends in the market right now, um, where we, what products we think will be the most successful like any other businesses. Hmm. Yeah, so you build in the, the plausibility. <laughs> and yeah, I imagine there's quite a few that don't get past that stage. And then the trends. And do you look at it every time as a global thing? Because you have a huge Asian market and community there, and then yes. you have European and America. Do you always look at it globally, or do you ever say this would work for Europe, but it won't work in Asia? Therefore, we'll bring it for Europe. Or does does it have to work everywhere for something to be progressed? Um, most of the time, we really try to make sure it works everywhere. Um, yeah, we've always worked. We are always in touch with all the offices worldwide, and we are really trying to make sure that we have a consistent strategy worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I I think right now we are seeing that. I mean, Asia they are also still uh, very strong, still on the instant photography world. So of course we are seeing some products that are still working well 
there more than in other markets. Um, but if we have, if we plan to launch a new product, it's always, we're always thinking overall for the brand. It, it's, we're not thinking for just only one market in specific. And, and is there, is there much of a difference between them? I mean, you mentioned they're like the instance a bit bigger in Asia. Do you see big trends or is it generally, you know, there's a general trend and then plus or minus 10% depending on the region? Um, I think it, it's between the, the US and European markets, there is not much difference. It's mostly with Asia. Mm. Uh, but we're, we're seeing that, I, I, I think it, it, in a few years anyway, the, the trend will be more or less the same everywhere. Um, yeah, I, I think all the markets are now going into the same direction, actually. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that makes absolute sense. Okay, so we're sort of coming to the, the last few minutes. Um, Graham, was there any other questions or thoughts that you had while we have Charlotte? Well, I mean, again, really just following up on my last question, because I, <laughs> cause the thing is that, <laughs> because I feel like you let her get away with that way too easily. Um, because like, the, the camera thing is a really big issue. Mm. So. I, obviously, you can neither confirm or deny anything, Charlotte, and we appreciate that. But let's say that I had some money that I was saving up to buy a camera within the next six to eight months. Would I be would I be better off just going and buying something on eBay, or would it be worth waiting to see if filmography did something within the next six to eight months? <laughs> I I think you can wait. A little, okay, cool. okay that's hope. good. Well, I'll I'll put my money back in my pocket. <laughs> so you see, good. No. And and you're right, you're right, because we, we've obviously talked a lot about films, and that's where a lot of innovation has been. But it is worth saying we spend again. We we talk to people who, um, you know, like the the the, the gap seems to be affordable new cameras to help people move in. Vintage cameras are fantastic, but obviously they eventually they will they will die out. You've been producing new cameras <laughs> just quietly, constantly in the background, um, and that definitely does make a huge difference. Because also the thing that people always talk about that you know with the risks with vintage cameras will they work? If it breaks, what happens? But again, you guys are selling them new, so you have guarantees. It's it's a normal product for you, and that's that's such a nice a nice thing versus anything else. And. Um, Charlotte, was there anything that you wanted to talk about that we haven't naturally covered? Anything you want to say to people? Anything you'd like to uh, communicate at the moment? Um, yes, maybe there is one thing I forgot to mention, um, which is that actually when we uh, launched the Phantom Kino film, we also did a big open call for testers. <laughs> Yes. yes. I have several people in the comments who uh, are specifically, I think, already signed up several times to that, yes? Oh, <laughs> several times? That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> we, will, we will find fine. you. <laughs> we don't accept applications. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, so we, we closed this open call now. It was only open for a week. Um, and we are now going through the list of all the applications. And there was just a really massive response. <laughs> We yeah, we had um, almost three thousand uh, applications, Oof. so yeah, we're going through them one by one. It's... How many slots? Two and a half thousand. So, <laughs> so we have we we have um, twenty testers in the end. <laughs> okay, so sorry, yes. Piper. Odds are not good. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe we can only hope. Um, oh no, that's fantastic, and you um. Because that's, I think, another thing that you've always done is you've always used community photos in your packaging on the website. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, and and also on our social media, I, I think I also saw one question was, um, do you use only professional photography or do you also share from the community? And actually, we do a bit of everything. Of course, we have some um testers lomo amigos as we call them who we have they may be sometimes uh, professional photographers but it might be also artists um illustrators people that we find interesting in general 
Um, and who are testing our products regularly. We also have, yes, people from the community and we have also the hashtag Halomography. So we just repost so many things from different channels all the time. So it's not, all, we don't want to only use professional pictures. We really want to have a good mix of everything. No, I think that's fine. and. Um... And actually, I do hold the honour of having once been uh, allocated Lomo Home of the Day. That was uh, <laughs> from several years ago. <laughs> but yeah, no, that, that, that whole point of the feedback into the community and, and people seeing photos that, you know, people are genuinely shot in the wild rather than under a studio lighting with a camera that definitely works and all, you know, all of those yeah. things that no one has time for that kind of stuff. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. Well, we've, we've done a full hour. Um, and we've given you a hard time about a lot of products. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's okay. Thank you so much, Charlotte, for joining. Honestly, it's been absolutely wonderful uh, to meet you and put a put a face to the name. Um, and I think a lot of people, uh, yeah, really appreciate you taking the time to to spend a Thursday evening uh, chatting with everyone and answering our, our demanding questions. Um, Thank you. <laughs> so what we'll do is. Um, as, as I said, someone's going to win some Lomo film, which is fantastic. So comments that from the uh, from the from the YouTube stream, I'll go through tomorrow and we'll release that. Graham and I will be back next week with another episode. Um, <laughs> it's huge. Um, whatever this is, us too. Um, <laughs> but we will release each other. Also, thanks. Sorry, thank you to Emil, who I have seen has been answering people's questions and helping them throughout. So um, really well done. Thank you so much for you. Thank you again, Charlotte. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. <laughs> and now I need to remember how to turn this off. <laughs>